It's Mitch from Swap Time, and I got the LFX engine uh, set up as a standalone right now. Put the new harness on it. Everything's connected. What's pretty neat, this is actually ready to drop into something. You have all four O2s already connected. To make this emissions legal, all we have to do is get the fuel tank pressure and the purge system hooked up. And you can just drop this in a vehicle, apply ignition and your starter solenoid wire, and that's it, you're up and running. Super, super simple. So I have ran it about, about a minute so far, throttle works. It smokes terrible, so hopefully this goes away. I'm not sure if the engine was late, somehow was on its side at one time. Uh, it sounds really smooth, so I believe it's good so far. But uh, I'll do a startup for you and uh, enjoy the smoke show and hopefully it cl clears up for us. seems pretty good. The problem is I don't have enough fuel pressure. This external pump is really old. We tested a lot of engines with it, so it was bad. And I'll replace the pump and get my intake set up ready for the truck. And it looks like we're good. Huge difference in smoke though. Before it filled up the entire shop. It was terrible. But here it is again, brand new engine harness. All I had to do was loop transmission lines. I went in and took off the serpentine belt so the power steering fluid doesn't shoot everywhere. Uh, Bricked up a tube. But uh, I would like to get a different fuel pump and have this thing really purr like a kitten with enough pressure. And I'm curious what it really sounds like. It, I guess it sounds all right, but I like to rev it up. You hear what it has. But the, this is update number three for the truck series. And as you can see, I have everything at the motor mounts, even the rubber motor mount itself. We could drop this in in a weekend and be driving it. I have everything I need. The only thing that's going to hold this up is a drive shaft. I have to get a custom drive shaft made because as you can see, there's no slip yoke here. This is a fixed yoke. So because of that, you have to get a drive shaft that's pretty much the same as a four x four front drive shaft that slides in itself back and forth. So there will be an extra cost in getting that made. Plus there's an adapter that gets rid of this rubber bushing, which is kind of unfortunate because I'd like to keep that. It just makes things uh, smoother. But uh, there's a bill adapter that changes this to a 1350 style you join so that's probably 180 dollars to 200 just for that adapter then the cost of the drive shaft um, i'll talk to adam here in town adam's drive shaft and uh since we get drive shafts from them every week they usually hook us up pretty good on our own projects 
The harness wasn't too bad to replace. It took about 30 minutes to remove. About the same amount of time to install. Just a little more intricate than the standard LS engines. Pretty cool. Uh, tomorrow or maybe next week I'll hook up my Camaro gauges to this and make it look nice. Put a little stand up here for the gauges. And uh, that way when I start it up you can see RPM, Prindle, um, all that stuff will work. It's pretty easy to do. I've been experimenting on doing plug and play packages with a BCM and a gauge cluster setup for Gen 4s and Gen 5s along with the LFX Camaro engines. Possibly the new, what I have in my 2016, I think it's an LGX. Um, that has the 8 speed transmission, it's pretty sweet. Here's a brand new L9H we dropped in a day. This is some of the stuff we developed. This is a factory harness with a fuse block connector, and we developed a fuse box that plugs right into it. Super clean, super easy. Um, we do a lot of swaps now, so we have to be very efficient and make things as OEM as possible. It's hard to do custom harnesses that take 10, 20 hours to make and lots of expensive machines to get the crimps perfect and lots of people to hire. Um, by using OEM materials and harnesses, we get by that and we will make adapters. And this makes it really fast and easy for these swaps to happen. Over here we have an LSA swap Jeep. It's done, but we did a Camaro SS PWM fan upgrade. So we have the fan installed, and now I'm just trying to get the PWM signal to actually work. Uh, I'm afraid that the Cadillac computer does not allow the PWM signal because I cannot get anything to come out of it. That's usually the case. A Camaro Gen 4 computer, same thing. A Camaro will not output a PWM signal where a truck um, operating system will output a PWM signal, which is just really nice. The fans are fully variable and only come on when they need to and just ramp up their speed slowly up and down. Here we got a crate engine LS3 and a Wagoneer. It moves us around effortlessly. It's pretty, pretty cool. It's a 5.3 California build, it's done. We're just working with California to make this carb legal. Here's a Gen 5 engine, 6.2, 6 L80. Uh, the only thing that we're waiting to do on this one is finish the Switch Pro's wiring. So I started this yesterday. So that'd be all cleaned up and be ready to ship out. There's my truck hiding back there with all these Jeeps. Oh, look, LS3 crate engine. We get about one to two of these a week now. Super cool. And all these are the old Jeep engines. We sell one to two Jeep engines a week, but uh, we just can't sell enough of them to get rid of our stockpile. We're doing a cam swap in a Gen 5 LE6. Here's the heads, the direct injection system. Ports are massive. We did a cam spring upgrade, Texas Speed Kit. Here's the direct injection injectors, big valves. This truck was running somewhat decent, but it's out of gas, so I need to put some gas in it. It's missing on two cylinders still. I'm not sure if I have a weak coil or what, but it's getting spark. It's getting fuel. It has some compression, but we still have a couple cylinders that just aren't firing well. And this is the LE6 we have the heads off of. 
So we'll plug plug these oil passages. We're getting rid of the DOD system, AFM, but we're keeping the variable valve timing. And this one already has a cam swapped in it. What is tough, if you do a Gen 5 cam swap, the oil pan has to come off because the oil pump is pretty big you have to slide it off the crankshaft to get the chain off. And that's gonna be a problem for people with muscle cars with limited clearance. Oh, we have another crate. That one is, I believe, a brand new L94 6.2 truck engine. Could be an LS3, not sure. Here's a Gen 5 LA6 8-speed going to Iceland. Really cool overland Jeep. A customer from Germany, he keeps it here. And it has a 6-liter in it. And he uses it. And it has the most LED lights of any Jeep I've seen so far. I've seen a lot of Jeeps. This two door in the air, it looks pretty plain Jane, but it's getting an LS3. So this thing will be just as fast as a Camaro SS. So it'll be pretty hilarious. Oh. That's the video update so far. So I'll try to keep going with these video updates and maybe next, not this weekend, maybe next weekend, We'll try to do the install on the the pickup truck with the V6. So next, let's gotta get the fuel pump, get that in. Get the, the fuel system is one of the most uh, important aspects of a engine swap, so, and I've struggled with that. So an in tank pump's always the way to go. So I'll use an '87 Blazer fuel tank with the uh, fuel injection set from factory, and just replace the pump with a uh, aeromotive pump. And that'd be nice. Be, it'll stay cool, be somewhat quiet, and definitely feed that 330 horse engine.